What's up you guys and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be doing a hopefully quick rundown of everything I've ever tried from Moira Cosmetics. That's right. This is somewhat of a ranking video. Um, it's not necessarily like numeral. It's more like categorized as far as would not recommend, meh, okay, and then like the top favorites that I would recommend if you were to ask me what should I get it's my first purchase those things will be kind of like my top recommendations I'll be sure to let you know which ones those are at the end of the video but we're gonna start kind of at the bottom with the stuff that disappointed me the most and worked my way up to the stuff that I would say spend your hard-earned money on this oh and if you are curious about this makeup today I am using the Heather Austin and Unearthly Cosmetics collection and that video should already be live so you can go check that out if you want to see me put this look together on there so that being said I have a basket of like the stuff I didn't really care for or wouldn't repurchase for one reason or another I'll work my way up to the meh and then we'll go into the more fun stuff there is a lot of great stuff here for the most part I only have a couple of products that were just like absolutely no so let's start there and that is the worst product <laughs> This is the, the worst product from Moira, and it's actually my most recent purchase from them, but that was these cream shadows. They call these the Everlust Shimmer Cream Shadow Pots, and these were so promising. These looked so pretty. Um, you swatch them with your fingers, you put them on your hand, and they were very creamy, very beautiful, very pigmented. However, you start working with them on the eyes, and they just kind of smeared away. They were not long-lasting. They were not crease-proof. I found that they were just very sheer. It did kind of give you this cool, like, editorial, like, slick, greasy, shiny moment. So, like, if you wanted that kind of, like, interesting grunge look, I think this was kind of a neat product, and maybe if they had, like, marketed more in that manner of like an eye gloss this would have worked but I don't think anything that they said it did it did and like the website claims were crazy like long-lasting pigment all day where like I experienced none of those things it wasn't even high shine so I do have a video about that it's one of my more recent ones trying out a Moira product and fortunately these were just a no I would say unless you were trying to go for that gloss effect um and in that case, just pick one. These aren't a collect them all situation. Um, if you're curious about that and what exactly I'm saying, go check out that video. But yeah, unfortunately, these were a miss. You will be seeing them decluttered from my collection very soon. I had four shades. I would probably keep one just for that editorial glossy grungy moment because I do enjoy that from time to time. It is fun. But yeah, I would probably be decluttering these. Moving on, these are things that... I would say are a no definitely um, and that was the gel eyeliner the statement gel liner um, I have the shade lime and this was okay it it just didn't have a lot of stay power it wasn't really creamy enough to glide onto the waterline as easily as I was liked um, I've used this in a video and applied fine but like by the time I was done with that talking portion it was gone so it just it didn't have enough stay power for me I definitely like my color pop gel liners much much more for the waterline so yeah I would say pass on this not terrible but there's better ones for the same price point their color selection was really great though but i would say pass on those another thing that i would say pass on is this um what do they call these diamond days liquid shadow this is just their standard you know liquid glitter shadow mine's already dried out like if you let these sit in your collection if you're a collector like me you have a lot of products this is going to dry out before you use it twice um, if this is the only thing in your collection, you're not going to get a lot of use out of it. Maybe a couple of weeks and you'll be looking for another. Um, I did do a review and demo of these and at the end of that I had just tried them and I was like, eh, yeah, they're okay. But, um, now I think it's been almost a year since that video. I'm just like... I wouldn't bother with these. I just, I wouldn't. Same thing with these. I actually, these are the duos. These are... The Total Match Duo Shadows, it's a cream matte side and a cream 
um, shimmer side really liked the versatility of these really liked the idea of being able to like throw them on the go touch up with them I liked the idea that they were long lasting but I didn't get a lot of uses out of the shimmer like it's pretty much empty kind of dries out a component can't really reach the bottom so what's there is gone um, I did really like the matte one however so if this was sold by itself I probably would buy this and I am keeping these around just for the matte I don't think that these are worth purchasing on so I definitely liked the matte shades the shimmers they were okay they just um, they were very low impact and didn't have like a huge high shine I didn't experience flaking or anything bad with these so these were just like an okay don't really recommend just because they don't last a long time and I personally only get major use out of half of it which is the matte side so um, if that's something that you would really, really want in your collection, these are a great price point. I have the shades Sweet and Sour and this or that. Um, I do also have a demo and review in that same video where I talk about um, the cream and liquid shadows. So pass on those. Next thing, um, these weren't bad products, but they didn't work out for me because of my personal preferences. So these are ones that are just like meh, but not really something I would recommend. And it's their brow products. I tried the angled brow pencil. I have the shade Ash Brown, and it's one of the ones with like a wedge tip. And then I tried, um, I wanted like to try like, um, they call it a mascara, brow defining mascara. And I wasn't really sure what the difference between a mascara and a gel is. These, I don't know, it gave quite a bit of color, but it didn't last a very long time. The like components a little too big for brows. It didn't have a long hold. So it just didn't quite hit the marks on things that I enjoy in like a gel brow product or a hold, which is usually I like to define. And then I want to hold the hairs that I do have into place to kind of complement the shape I drew in. So this just was a mess. Didn't have the hold I was looking for. If you like big fluffy brows, you have a lot of brow hairs, you just kind of want to touch up. This combo might be for you. I particularly like something with a stronger hold, a little bit more precise application, and I like doing a little bit more arched and defined brows, so I need smaller tip application. So pass on those for me. Okay, so this is where we're starting to go up a little bit more into the it's okay but not perfect realm, meaning like the product worked out for me, it did what it said, but there were just some issues that I had that didn't make me super excited about it. Um, however, there are things like if I did a declutter, I wouldn't be like, get out of here. I would be like, let's try it out. Let's play a little longer. So that is the eye-catching dip liners for me from where they're like they're liquid eyeliners they came in a ton of fun colors I did a whole video on these and you know there was a learning curve because I don't do like a lot of graphic liner looks I don't do a lot of things like that it was somewhat beginner friendly but I did find that like it was very much like nail polish where you can't apply too much at once you know you want to do like a thin layer but you also can't layer too much or it'll get chunky I started to experience like um wrinkling to where it would kind of the product would dry and shrink and kind of grab at my eyelids so yeah there was a little bit of a learning curve not the most beginner friendly for me I had originally bought the brown one loved it love the brown didn't have issues I think it's because I wasn't trying to do anything like fun and graphic and cool it was just you know defining the look I did and be done so I did like the brown no issues with that the colored ones the final coup de grace for me to just be like these just aren't my favorite was they did not wash off. I had such a hard time removing these and I used oils, I used lotions, I used all my typical balms and things that I used to remove like really heavy makeup. These did not want to come off. So if you're doing like a travel day, a beach day, a whole day at like Disney or something or somewhere at a water park you're sweating, these might be for you. They didn't wash off easily at all, even the lightest shade. Um, if you are doing something, you know, for fun like me in the evening and you have a modest work environment, you're not gonna be able to wash these off in the morning. So that was just something that made me not really want to recommend them as easily. They just, they didn't wash off and there was a bit of a learning curve to them. So really fun color selection and, you know, picking one of these up if you have like a very specific task for it. Um, if you want to lean on it for daily use. I don't know, you'll have to let me know if you've tried these and how they work out for you like that. Because for me, I, I struggled with these a little bit and they wouldn't be 
my top recommendation. Like I'd like to try another brand and compare and see, am I being too picky? Am I being too hard on this product? I don't know, let me know. So the final thing that is more meh to me was because of the colors. I just didn't particularly like the colors on me. However, the color story is beautiful. The selection is beautiful. This is just me starting to get like nitpicky or really filter in my personal preference. So they had a few of these and I picked out the cool tone one. I just really wanted some cool tone neutrals in my collection. Didn't really play around with those much. And now I'm like, yeah, I can see why. Just certain cool tone neutrals, if they're too gray leaning, just look terrible on me. I kind of have olive undertones and yeah, they just, they aren't flattering. And then the Moira eyeshadow formula is a lot like more airy. It's a little bit light. It's buildable, but it really is one of those formulas that's kind of thin. You can almost over blend it out. So that with a gray color that had like a funny interaction with my undertones, it just, it didn't work out like that thinner formula and the shades. Like it just always looked like I was sick or unwell and not like in a cute fun crunchy way either. It was just sort of like you know I was better off with no makeup and that's not fun for anybody. So this color story just was meh. There was a few or this color story on me was just meh I should say but I really loved some of these like grungier kind of neutrals where they're really pretty. This one is very impactful. It's very creamy metallic. So if these are flattering tones on you, you probably would like this. Just expect that it's a, a ColourPop kind of formula. Even ColourPop's formula I think might be a little bit richer than this one. It's not bad, but it's definitely more like for beginners where it's thinner. It builds out if you're really trying to do dramatic looks. Um, you're going to have to work a little bit more to build these up. So shimmers and everything were great with the exception of the silver. I was so disappointed in the silver. Like it's just so hard pressed and kind of like, let's see. It just wasn't very impactful. And I have um, ColourPop's on a whimsy and that one is like the creamiest, most beautiful, most intense silver I own. And so nothing really compares to that, but the other shimmers in here were great. That silver was just like, lacking and I feel like that was one of the more exciting kind of punchy shimmers in here so uh Moira's shimmers do tend to be a little bit more on what I compare like luxury formulas it is more toned down it is more natural it is very effortless but it's definitely not like in the indie eyeshadow realm where you're getting these like three-dimensional sparkles and flips of color so it's definitely more for like toned down everyday wear yeah. this one would be kind of a pass for me I might declutter it I don't know I keep it around because I still reach for it but now that I have the ColourPop tote palette I'm kind of reaching for that more than this so I do enjoy having this it's really pretty packaging but they made it kind of like on the chunkier side I don't think it's necessary. I do like the sleeker packaging that some of their other palettes, which I will show you next, have been. So that was it for like my bad bin, the meh. Now we're going into things that I really enjoyed, things that I repurchased, things that I liked. Um, some of it's still a bit more in the meh territory, but it's definitely in the good box. So let's move on to those. I'm going to start with the eyeshadow palettes. Just like I finished on the bad bin with eyeshadow palettes. So we'll just kind of transition into their eyeshadow palettes. I love these. This is from the Smoothie series and I did looks with the two and then I got this as a present so I'd like to do this on my channel soon and play with these but these are just like such beautiful um, kind of additions to my collection to really fill out some of these crazy indie sparkly palettes that I have because they're just what I call like a really clever monochromatic palette. You just, you have one tone and you have all these neutrals. Um, you usually have like one standard shimmer, more of a satin and then a topper. So you're still getting like a variety of, you're still getting a variety of like textures and formulas in here. But again, everything does kind of lean to me more on like that luxury side where everything isn't super punchy, nor is it really meant to be. Um, but I don't find that these are like disappointing either. So yeah, I really love these. Um, I mostly like to collect them for those neutrals. It's just really nice having these neutrals to lean on and they kind of are like toned for their colors. So these ones lean more yellow. These ones definitely have a very undertone. And then these have like kind of a warm yellow leading undertone as well really great palettes so I'm pretty sure they still sell these some of them are I think this green ones sold out I don't know if they'll bring these back I wish they would and then yeah I definitely prefer the sleeker over this like bigger bulkier 
if you were curious about um, the smoothie series palettes and those are still available, they're definitely a recommendation for me. I like those. Okay, so now for the most part, everything is kind of in no order at all. It's either going to be okay or I absolutely recommend it. Love it. Okay, so I have a primer here from Moira that I enjoyed. Um, I don't know that anyone would enjoy it quite as much as me. It didn't do like a whole lot as far as color correcting, but I really liked the way it kind of textured my skin. It really is like chapstick for the skin. It kind of smoothed things out. Um, it was very like hydrating. I do kind of tend to like beauty products with the buzzword bomb in it. I don't know why, so that's admittedly here a little bias. But yeah, you can see like I'm almost done with this product. And this is the Dream Canvas Color Correcting Primer Balm in the shade green. Um, I've showed you guys this on camera before. And you know, it's not life changing as far as color correcting. The reason that it's not like the top recommendation, this is just like a few things away from me being like, yes, love this. And that was, I wanted to be able to use it without makeup. I wish it blurred and did a subtle color correcting without leaving a green cast and it did that so I always felt like I had to put something on top of it continue my makeup process you know it does say it's a primer it's not like a tinted anything but I just kind of wish that about it I wish that I could just like leave this on my skin and just have like a blurring color correcting effect and be done but unfortunately you can see that green cast and you need to continue your makeup so that's just something I wish it could do, just a magic component. It didn't claim to do that or say that it could, but um, I just find that it's like a little lacking. It's like an extra step that I often forget. However, when I do remember it, I really enjoy this product and I really enjoy the way my makeup goes on and the way that my skin feels and looks. So worth mentioning, if you're curious about it and like that kind of balmy texture on your skin, you would probably enjoy this one. Another one that I enjoy, I want to say like I don't like it, but then I continue to reach for it and use it and enjoy it. So these are kind of like in the okay category. Um, they're just like a little off from being perfect for me. And these are the Pro Long Priming Cream Shadows. I have two colors. I have the shade Rose Sand and the shade Beige. And basically one's just like a cooler color a little bit leaning mauve, this one's leaning a bit yellow, and these I actually like for like no makeup days. I take my ring finger and just tap it over my lids as more like a concealer. Um, I find that I continuously have to check on it and like make sure I'm not creasing or I need to set it with powder. My complaint with this, and honestly with a lot of Moira products, is that it just makes my lids look a bit textured, like they look a little dry, and then when you have to set with powder and I'm putting eyeshadow on top, it can just be a bit much. So if I can just do a little bit of concealing on a no makeup day, I enjoy these. They do make a nice affordable base, but I wouldn't say like go collect them all. They're life changing for makeup. I would say instead of buying two, like I did go pick up a MAC, Mac paint pot. I just think that those were like a little bit better base for makeup without like the drying element that these tend to have. They just could kind of added a little bit of texture and dryness to my eyelids that I don't really need. I'm not saying it's not there, but I don't need to accentuate it. So that's my complaint with these that just didn't tip it over the edge from okay to recommend. Not a bad product by any means, but just not perfect. Same thing with these. I, I wanted to like these. I'm continuing to use these. There's nothing about them that's like, oh, bad bun, but they just aren't the smoothest. Like my skin is just a little too maybe mature, dry, or textured for these products. They just tend to sit on top and accentuate those things. And again, I'm not saying they're not there. I'm just not putting makeup on to accentuate it either. Like if I'm better off without using anything under my eyes, like... So that's where these are. And I have um, two concealers. It is the Mega Concealer. They claim it's waterproof full coverage. And then I have the Lavish Creamy Concealer. That one is in the shade Oatmeal and 150, oh cream, 150 cream. So they're both several shades lighter than what I use for foundation. That's usually what I do because I like to brighten when I conceal and I usually kind of sculpt my cheeks, do things like that with concealer. These I thought were really interesting because they definitely have the same wear time, the same finish, the same blending effect. They blend out really nicely, both of these um, formulas. 
and they're very interesting because it definitely does feel like this is just like a creamier thinner version of this one this one's thicker like when you put it on it tends not to want to move or blend out as far still blends beautifully but it's definitely like it's what I imagine like shape tape working like I've never used shape tape but it's like what I imagine like what everyone said was like so great about that that's kind of what this does where it just like it really covers it really stays still again I find I get a lot of drying texture something that you know is there but these just tend to accentuate it um if i had to pick between the two or make a recommendation i think i would repurchase the creamy one it just seems to do a little bit better on my skin however i find both to be very beautiful they both have like a very nice blend ability to them buildable they worked nicely with the other products i had again just not tipping them into the yes fully recommend it or yes, I'm gonna go repurchase this and miss it, is that it just looked a little drying under my eyes. We'll see though, I'm gonna continue. I take a long time to make up my mind, but I've been playing with these long enough to just tell you that for me, they're not perfect because they're drying. I don't think that's gonna change, but I did like the creamy one with above the two. So time will tell, but as of right now, these aren't like go out and I recommend it. If you asked me about it or told me it was in your cart, I think that you would probably enjoy it as an affordable formula. Okay, I think now we are to the final, yes, I would recommend it. I love it. Products, um, these aren't really in any particular order from there. Like the number one isn't necessarily like, ah, oh, the number one. These are all kind of the top number one things that I would say. If you tried any of these, I like them, recommend them. The cheek products, let's go into those. I did a whole video on these Moira cheek products. The component is a little eh. And these are very, very pigmented. That was kind of my one issue with them is they're almost over pigmented. Now, someone was kind enough to let me know that a better way to use these is with a giant brush and you dip in and then you glide it on and you're supposed to get kind of this gradiented effect and with a bigger brush you're not picking up quite as much pigment so that was like the intended use so I thought that was really interesting I have tried that off camera and I don't know it didn't really work out for me as far as being able to see all the colors and things but I did appreciate that comment and that feedback because I was like oh okay that makes sense as to why the heck these are so pigmented um, but that was my biggest thing with them is I just I always find I have a little extra work with these to like tone them down But I just appreciate everything else about them so much like just the beauty in the packaging The fact that you get kind of a few colors in here because I do like to dip into different sides and kind of customize My own color. I don't think you need to go and collect them all. I'd say just pick one that suits your fancy I'll probably be decluttering a couple of these soon um, I'm just not reaching for them every day like I used to because they are so pigmented and I'm back into cream products. So these definitely I would recommend if you were curious about them. I always recommend them with the disclaimer that very pigmented. So if that's something that just turns you off and you're like, no thanks, unfortunately these are not for you. And same goes for the signature bronzer. I picked these up did a video on these, just like a first impression. This is just an overspray down here, but really beautiful blend, very beautiful color selection, um, really nice performance, just a little bit over pigmented. Okay, so all of the following products are now basically things that I would recommend to you. I would say yes, get it, I love it. Top recommendation from Moira Cosmetics from me. So. Not really in any order after that. These all fall into that category. Most of them are lip products. So let's kind of bounce over to those. I'm going to talk about a handful of these. And I did an extensive video on all of their lip products that I have tried. I haven't tried anything bullet. So what I have tried is what I believe is called their plush cream which is just like kind of like a cream lipstick in this sort of component. It doesn't dry down or anything. Really nice. If you like the M Cosmetics Lip Clouds, I believe is what they're called. That's one of my favorite formulas. This reminds me a lot of that. You like this and I don't know if you can kind of tell lights kind of washing everything out. It's very hard to tell even in person, but one is like a vanilla and one is like a rose lid. But they both have like the really pretty components. This one has butterflies, this one has hummingbirds. 
really pretty packaging from Moira, but I like the the plush, lip plush cream. And then the one that dries down is their Lip Divine, and that's their liquid lip formula. I have a whole swatch video on this and the following. really like these, so I have four different shades from them. Enjoy them all. This is kind of my go-to lip formula. And it's affordable, so yeah, definite win. I would definitely say try these out. Um, they're very comfortable, they're long wearing. Um, I wouldn't say they were like the most bulletproof, but you can apply them over themselves, just like a really nice formula. And I have a whole video about that, and you can see the colors. But the other one that is in the video I'm mentioning is their Lip Crush. So there's a plush, and this is the crush. I'm not sure if this is being discontinued. There are still some on the website. Um, this is a really nice formula too, a bit more like liquidy, a little bit more moussey. Um, it's somewhere in between like a dry down matte and a cream. It's nice. I like it. This is in the shade Butterflies. It's like a burnt orange. It's really pretty. So I recommend all of those three different formulas. are really, really pretty. The last lip thing that I tried and really, really liked, but definitely recommend specifically in this color, is Red Hot. I'd like to try another color and see if the pigmentation varies or if it's all like this much, but this is their Luminizer Lip Gloss, and it is really red, it's really pretty, it's a very pigmented, so it is like putting on like a lipstick, but it's like a high shine red, and it's very like juicy and bright. So, so pretty, I really enjoyed this one, and I like it a lot, so I would recommend this product from Moira as well, especially if you like a red gloss, try this one. Well, for eyeliners, you know, I gave that other one kind of a harsh review, and the other one was kind of a, the liquid one was like a meh, but these two, I do recommend and I do like this one was their glitter liner I think it's just called yeah glitter 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 liner and this is in the shade of pink Aurora it's so pretty I really liked this one this one stayed really put for a very long time it was easy to apply there's different size glitter particles in there and I did find that I could kind of like control some of the bigger ones and do placement with a few layers like they didn't flake off they layered with those liners pretty nicely so so far I really like this um, I am starting to run out but this is just a really fun one. Even though the glitters didn't really flake off or anything, it's still to say like be really careful around the eyes. I was applying mine more in like a graphic liner situation up here. Um, I probably would personally stay away from like the lower lash line, but I bet you could like drawing little teardrops, things like that, like more artistic things. Really, really cool and pretty. So I like that formula a lot. Um, the next one I really like was this Jumbo Liquid Liner. I believe they have a precise one as well. I liked this one. It definitely is like Jumbo. It looks like a little marker or Sharpie or something. It doesn't apply or feel like one. I don't like when um, liquid eyeliners feel like they're very like alcohol based, like you are putting some kind of weird marker on there. I don't like that. So this was really nice. I found that I could do a thicker application or a more precise one. So it's pretty versatile. Stayed put. Um, um, stayed all day but I didn't have to like wear it the next day I could wash it off when I was ready so yeah I really liked this product and would recommend it and I believe this is just in the shade black yeah they did have a couple other colors I think a brown it'd be interesting to try their brown but liked the black one next is the first thing I think I ever tried from Moira and it is their loosened cream shadows and this is just like an oily based like glitter topper I say oily based but like that's kind of how it feels it's more slick and clear I really liked these as a topper they had really pretty like shifting colors I liked the selection I had more going over these two but I have more like just like topper luminizers I'd like to use these up and kind of get rid of them in my collection but for people wanting to dip their toes into Moira and try these out I would say these are fun just know that they're more like sheer toppers this one is a bit more on the pigmented side but I still reach for more powders when I want this kind of deep shade I don't usually have a lot of creasing with these they do wear for a while but they don't like fully set down they do kind of stay like glossy and things so so in the long run, like if I was wearing these for a very long time, these do crease, so especially on me, but like initially they're fine and it is something that you can layer with other products like your eyeshadows and things. I don't have an issue. Next is a very, very beautiful powder. This is like an interesting one where um, it comes in like this potted formula and it's like loose but at the same time it's kind of not it's no more loose than like dipping into an eyeshadow palette that has like a flaky formula that kind of like 
picks up particles but and like melts into the skin that's at least with these two shades how I experienced this particular formula from Moira and they call this their star show shadow pots and I have the shade fantasy which is like a rose gold leading mauve really pretty and then I have omg which is kind of like that teal to gold flip with like a reddish pinkish base this one's really special because there's also like a pink reflect in there so it's hard to catch but really really pretty I loved the application of these it was just like putting like little like flecks of metal like foil metallic goodness like in the best way it was just like like liquid metal it just like blended right in I really enjoyed these um really high shine really pretty I found that they stayed on for quite a while I'd like to play with them more and just see how they mix with other things but they're really really nice again they're like a loose formula but a bit more like creamy like feeling I don't know it's really interesting I liked these and I'd be interested to try more colors but like right now I want to use what I have in my collection I definitely have added a lot over the last few months I would recommend that formula for sure if you're looking for like a single potted high shine um, shadow okay this might be it this might be the last thing this is probably my most favorite product from moira and that is their love heat cream blush i have the shade i respect you they just released some new shades i can't wait um, i hit pan it's not really hard to hit pan in moira product my favorite way to apply this cream blush is with the elf putty brush it's just like this short handled one um putty primer applicator i use this for all my cream bronzer and cream blushes and yeah this combo love it so much i find that this isn't really like a sticky kind of blush even though it does have a little bit of like a shine to it it's kind of more of that glow within um, it's not like glossy feeling to the touch or even like looking so really really pretty so a lot of people are probably talking about this right now since they just launched like all new colors and you know people are talking about this brand a bit more than they used to but yeah this is probably my favorite product from them and the thing that I would recommend to someone looking for a product like this like really really pretty enjoy this a lot I find I don't have to set this down like I could keep going on and on about this product and I probably will in the future pick up one more shade once I'm close to running out I like this one for its neutrality and it seems like they have a lot more in this color family but like deeper and lighter like where this would be like the mid-tone of that shade so I'm kind of eyeballing those and thinking to myself that I would have fun with one of the deeper ones but I don't really know I say that and then I think about you know the pigmentation of these and how I immediately when I put it on felt like so overdone in a way that I don't like and I'd have to touch it down so yeah we'll see I, I lean towards those deep shades but then I wonder if I'll have that issue so that is the roundup I have tried a lot in the last I'd say three years Moira products and discovering the brand um, for a while I couldn't be stopped with trying new things I think I pumped the brakes now because they seem to be re-releasing a lot of the same things but in a different component or a slightly different formula so I kind of have the shades already in at least two formulas from them you know so I think I'm kind of pumping the brakes for now the lip products are definitely the I'm interested in they seem to be a hit in like all the categories I've tried that's it for today that's the rundown I hope this was entertaining I hope this was also helpful I hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one